made summer 2019 it is so so exciting to be with you my name's daisy and thank you for coming to this webinar where we're going to talk about the five steps you need to take to win more cleaning customers now before we get started i just want to say congratulations really congratulations you have just sat down and invested in you and your cleaning business and that is way more than a lot of cleaning business owners are doing if you look at all your competition right now are they sat investing time in educating themselves are they trying to change their business from one that's just plodding along each day to one that's going to grow no but you are so really congratulations and thank you for being here now, before I get into the five steps that I believe will win you more cleaning customers tomorrow, really easy to implement steps. Before we get into that, I'm going to give a little bit of a story about who I am and why I'm here speaking to you about these tips. So my name's Daisy and my family have a carpet cleaning business in Manchester in the UK. My family, my mum and my dad, they both run the business, or they did at the time. Um, my mum now has a different business, entrepreneurship's just in their blood. Um, but at the time, they both ran a carpet cleaning business. And really, they worked every hour under the sun. They are amazing people. They gave me an amazing, amazing start to life. They paid for my education. I didn't go without anything. They gave me, my brothers and my sister, the best start in life and gave us so many beautiful experiences, holidays, um, but it did come at a cost. And the cost was, I didn't get to see my mum and dad growing up as much as I'd have liked. And when I did see them, they weren't very relaxed. Um, on any given school day, I would wake up um, before my alarm to the sound of my dad being sick every morning every morning then I went to school he would wake up before me because he was worried sick that phrase worried sick <laughs> there is stemmed in truth and I have felt it I've seen my dad worried about how he's going to pay for a mortgage um, if one of the van broke van broke or he needs new machinery worried about how he's going to pay for it um just constantly the worry of trying to run a business was consuming him so that was my wake-up call was my dad being sick i'd then come downstairs to eat my porridge before school and he would already be at his computer um sorting out the diaries for the day being the accountant sorting out all the invoices then all the employees had come to our house because we had our home office at the time um, and he'd be dealing with the kind of struggles of having employees and the politics. He'd then go and do a full day of cleaning and quoting, trying to win new customers, organising the marketing, so leaflets to be sent out. And he would get in later than... Um, then I so I would already be in bed me my brother and my sister tucked up asleep and he'd get in later so to start a day being sick and to finish a day not even seeing your children is no way to live and he did it for amazing reasons he wanted us to have a better start than he had um, he gave us so much um, but at the cost of not seeing him and that didn't stop Monday till Friday my dad would work at the weekends. Um, I can't tell you the amount of family holidays that he cancelled or said um, to my mum, you take the kids, I'm going to have to work because an employee's called in sick or because I can't pull myself away from work. So he didn't even stop at the weekends. This was relentless. He was working overdrive. And yes, he ran a successful business in that um it was always busy but busy didn't equal profitable and busy did not equal happy because he was working every hour god sent 
Fast forward to years later, I went to college. Um, I then after college went and studied um, sales and marketing in real jobs. So I was kind of learning on the field. And one day came home and saw that my dad was in exactly the same position. You know, he was still worried about paying the mortgage, doing all the jobs in a cleaning business, you know, the accountant, the marketer, the actual cleaner, the mechanic who has to fix broken bands, um, the therapist that has to deal with all of the problems that come with employees. He was just doing absolutely every job and he didn't seem any happier. And I just said, what's the point? You run a business, don't we? We start a business because we want a better life than a nine to five. We want to choose the hours we work. We want financial freedom or at least financial excitement where we can predict how much money we're going to bring in and we can bring in more than a normal salary would. We want a better life for our children. And he just still years later was in that same treadmill. Um, so me and my dad, we sat down and we came up with some simple ways to get more cleaning customers and we made sure that we did them consistently and within a few months his business was transformed his business had more stability he could predict that he was going to get more work and he knew with quite a lot of security that the phone would ring every single day with new jobs coming in enough to fill everyone's diaries because he'd taken steps before to make sure that jobs were gonna come in. He'd given himself that security and he'd also automated that. So with that in mind, he was then able to predict that the phone was gonna ring. He wasn't worried about paying the bills because he knew new work was gonna come in. He wasn't worried about employees not having jobs to do because he knew that phone was gonna ring and he could take a breath and he could start to have a business that worked around his life rather than his life working around the business. And that's something now that I truly believe that the good people out there, the ones that are hardworking, that grow businesses for the right reasons, because they want a better life for their kids, their family, their loved ones. People like you that really want to grow a business to work around their life deserve it. And even if you work really hard, it doesn't mean you'll get it. But if you work smart and create systems that are going to produce a stable amount of jobs coming in, one that you can scale and say, I want more jobs, so I'm going to put more time or more money into these methods, then you know that you can grow a business that's going to grow around the goals that you have. Does that sound like something that you want? Do you want the phone to ring consistently and to know that? You're going to have your diary booked up for all your employees. Do you want to know that if you took on a new employee, you will be able to guarantee that their diary is filled? Then listen to these steps. Um, now, I don't work within my family's cleaning business. Um, I have a marketing business, which is called Digital. And we teach carpet cleaners, domestic cleaners, commercial cleaners, any cleaning business owner you can think of. We teach them these steps that they can have the same success. So I know this isn't unique to my family's business. If you follow these steps, you too can have that stability, that growth that you really do deserve. As I said, I make it my mission to tell as many cleaning business owners as possible about these five steps because they worked for my family's business and they have worked for so many other cleaning business owners. I make it my mission to give that information away for free because I don't want another cleaning business family to suffer like my family did. Uh, my family are in a great position now because of these steps and I want to make sure you are too. As well as giving these five steps away for free, we also have a blog where we share tons of information for free that will help your cleaning business. Um, we interview amazing cleaning business owners. There we've just interviewed Josh Latimer, here Dan Liebrecht. We offer loads of really easy to implement steps. So you can go to our website, godigital.com and get 
tons of really valuable information for free. Now, if marketing isn't something that you want to get stuck in, if you think, actually, I'd prefer to be running my business and to give the marketing to someone that knows what they're doing, that's also an option. We're able to run your marketing for you for as little as $200 a month. How do we do that? Is we create amazing Google and Facebook ads that are tried and tested. We know they work because they've worked for hundreds of cleaning business owners that we've worked with. We send traffic to your website or to one of our really cool landing pages like this that is geared towards getting people to pick up the phone and call you. We know that these landing pages work um, and the really smart thing is once they do call you or once they do fill out their contact details, that's when we can see exactly what's working in your business and what isn't because we create live dashboards that tells you how much you've spent on marketing that month, how many leads you've got from it, how many calls, how many messages. And the really cool thing is, is we can work out what you're likely to have got back from that. So what was your return on investment? And I can sit there and listen back to the calls with you and offer advice on how to turn callers into customers. I answered the phone for my family's cleaning business for three years. So I've got a bit of experience on how to convert people into customers. Um, so I can sit here and listen to calls like this with you. Hello, you're free to bright and shine. Joe speaking. Hi, Joe. Do you offer carpet cleaning around Portsmouth? and give you amazing advice. If that's something you're interested in, feel free to contact me. Really easy, step onto our website, Go Digital, and you can book in a call with me. Choose the time and date that works best for you, and I would love to jump on a call. But let's get back to the free stuff, because this free stuff is gold dust. Let me tell you what these steps are. Um, I've tried to make sure that these steps are one, simple, so that everyone can do them, and two, implementable, meaning after this webinar, you can go and take some action right now to make your business um, more stable, knowing that you have more security, knowing that jobs are going to come in, and ready for growth, because you've got the right steps in place to win more customers. And I'm really, really wanting to share them with you. So if you're reading, if you're listening to this and you're nodding your head thinking, I've got this type of business, I really want to grow, I resonate with Daisy's story, keep on listening. And I'm so glad you're here. So with that, step number one to win more cleaning customers is you need to be where your customers are. So in order to be where your customers are, you need to know who your customers are. So I want you to just take a minute and think, who is it that you want to target? You don't want to target absolutely everyone. In fact, you want to target a specific type of person. So is that specific type of person domestic? Do you want to be going into homes and cleaning them? And if so, niche it down further. Is it that you want to be um, targeting new mums that have new babies? Is that the sort of home that you want to be targeting? Or do you want to be targeting homes that are within a 10 mile radius of your home? Because you know that that will save time on fuel if you can get round to them all. And it will also mean that you don't have to spend as much time driving around stuck in traffic because you can get to more jobs in a day. If that is your type of person, write that down. Your customer is a domestic 10 mile radius of your house. Or is it a commercial? And if you are looking for commercial customers, what type of customers do you want? Do you want hotels? Do you want office buildings, malls? Do you want cinemas? Think about who it is that you're targeting. If you want to make sure that you're 
dealing with the commercial market is it real estate agents that you need to be in front of that can pass you jobs so therefore you're not quoting on new jobs all of the time really imagine who it is that you want to target and this doesn't work if you just say everyone you really need to niche in you can have more than one niche but for the sake of this argument we're just going to choose one when you get really clear on who your customer is then we can start to be where that customer is so if it is new mums that you're targeting you know that you can start to market people where mums are hanging out right and how are we going to do that how are we going to be where new mums and let's keep using that example where new mums are hanging out there are three there are lots but there's three that we're going to focus on of making sure that your cleaning company is in front of your target audience and in this case it's new mums these are the three that i'm going to chat about the first is google adwords google adwords which is now called google ads is something that i love because the targeting can be really really specific you can choose a location so just like when i said you can do a 10 mile radius of your house you can choose I only want to show my advert to people within a 10 mile radius of my house. You can choose certain demographics to target more. So if you know that new mums are going to be of a certain age and they're going to be a certain gender, women, you can start to target them. Um, and you can choose what words you want to target. So, um, and by words, what I mean is if somebody Googles um, carpet cleaner near me, you might want to show for that term, but you might not want to show for cheap carpet cleaner. Um, you might want to show for professional maid service business, but you not, might not want to show for maid service Groupon, because in both of them cases, someone is looking for a cheap one-off job and they're not going to sound like your loyal customer. So Google Ads allows you to do that. What I also love about Google Ads is it's really fair. You only pay when somebody clicks on your ad. So if a potential customer typed in maid service in London, the only time that you pay is if somebody clicks on your ad. If they click on someone else's, you don't pay. So if they click on your ad and you just pay for that click, that is so different to something like the days where we used to put adverts in the yellow pages or in church magazines or pay for leaflets. In that case, you pay up front a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand dollars and then you hope that somebody sees your advert in a magazine or sees your advert in the yellow pages. So you've paid up front and then you hope. With Google Ads, you're only paying if someone's specifically looking for your service. So in this case, made service in London and then clicks on your particular ad. So they've really shown an interest in your business. So I think that's a way fairer way of marketing. The second way that you can get in front of your target audience is Facebook ads. So oh, Facebook ads are amazing because you can get super targeted. They have so much data on people. It's scary how much data Facebook has on us all. But you can use that in your cleaning business to then say, I want to show this particular advert just to new mums because that's who I'm going to target. What's really great about really specific targeting is it can bring the cost down for your conversions because you're getting really niche and your ad is going to speak to the person that you're trying to target because you can get so much more specific in your ad. So rather than doing a, let's say you're a maid company, a maid service company, rather than just doing a generic ad that says we clean rooms, three rooms for X amount of price, you can create an advert that's got a stressed out mum holding a baby on it that says, need some extra hands around the house. We get it. You're a new mum. Call us. We're here to help. And if I'm a new mum scrolling through Facebook, that message is going to speak to me. You're solving my problem. You're making me feel heard. 
and no longer are you then competing with all the other cleaning businesses out there that might offer a cheaper price than you or they can do more rooms for the same amount instead you're solving a problem for me you're telling me that you're going to take some work off my hands then i'm choosing you so you're not can you see you're not competing on price because that's what you do if you only ever mention your price in your ads instead because you're niching in um, on whoever your target audience is you're able to say what their problem is and solve it and therefore you don't have to compete on price instead you're competing on the value that you can offer to that new mum and there's plenty of examples there's loads you can do with facebook ads you could show adverts to people that have pets and say oh has your dog love your dog but don't like the way he smells we can clean your carpets and if i'm a dog owner i'm gonna think wow that's me that's a problem that i have therefore i'm gonna use you guys um that level of targeting is amazing so that's two ways google ads and facebook that you can get in front of your target audience the third is be physically in the place that your target audience is so if it's new mums, then you need to be leafletting and putting up flyers in nurseries and play centers and like yoga mum classes. If your target audience is people that own pets, then put them flyers up in dog groomers and make connections with people that own dog grooming salons. If your target audience is hotel owners, because you're going after the commercial market, figure out when all the trade shows are for hotel business for the hotel industry and get a stand there you are literally you know it might be a couple of hundred pounds or dollars to have a stand there but you are going to be in front of all of your target audience they're going to be all in one room together how powerful is that so that is step number one is be where your customers are and the only way that you can do that is to know who your customers are. So that is the first implementable step I want you to take away is after this webinar, write down a profile of who your customer is and then go and figure out how you can get in front of them. And three ways you can do that. The three ways that I prefer that work really well for my family's cleaning business is Google ads, Facebook ads, and being physically where they are and dropping off leaflets and flyers. So that's step one. Now, step two that will work wonders for any cleaning business owner out there is if you're doing a fantastic job for all of your customers, which I know you are because you're hardworking and you're a perfectionist because that's why you went into business. <laughs> if you're doing a fantastic job, you need to be getting five star reviews on an online platform from all of your customers. So you want to choose one platform, whether it's Google, Yelp, Facebook, and you want to get as many five-star reviews on there as possible. The reason being is this will boost your profile. It will then convince new customers to choose you over any of your competing cleaning business businesses out there. The recommended platform, the one that I think works the best, is Google My Business. So to get Google reviews is really, really powerful. And the reason it's really powerful is it also gives you another listing on Google. So if you've ever looked on Google and typed in cleaner in your location, you'll see the adverts right at the top. Then you'll see what's known as the map pack, which is where it shows addresses of different cleaning businesses. And then you'll see the organic listings. Now the ads are what we just spoke about in step one, that's Google ads. Step, um, step two is about the map pack. And the way that you can get in the map pack is first, register your business on Google My Business. And second is have tons of Google reviews. So what's really powerful here is your Google reviews are gonna convince people to choose you over your competitors because that's how people um, select who they're gonna welcome into their home or their place of work now. 85% of people from the last stat that I read, 
85% of people trust online reviews as much as they trust a personal recommendation. So they trust them strangers on the internet as much as they trust their nan or their auntie giving them a review, uh, giving them a recommendation. So that is so powerful. So as I said, the first is that it convinces people to choose you. But second, Google reviews are going to increase your chances of being on that first page of Google and make sure you're in a really good spot. It's right up there on the top. Um, and you can do that for free. It doesn't cost anything to go get loads of reviews. It just costs a little bit of time and effort. And you're there up on Google. The businesses that have done this, that I have seen, I've seen a huge amount of extra inquiries, extra phone calls, extra emails, because they're up there, visible on Google with fantastic glowing reviews. Now, I said that it takes time and effort to get Google reviews. It does, don't get me wrong, but I have a really simple strategy for getting them reviews. I'm not going to talk about it in this webinar because it could add another 20 minutes. But what I am going to do is send you to the YouTube video where I detail out a step-by-step, -step, really simple strategy for how to get more Google reviews. It's really simple, but you need to follow all the steps. I worked with one cleaning business and he followed all the steps every single day and he said it didn't take up a lot of his time, a couple of minutes extra every day. And within one month, he had 110 Google reviews. He was on the first page of Google and he noticed he got a lot more inquiries to his cleaning business. That's how powerful this strategy can be. And I'm giving it to you for free. So I'll make sure in the notes, you get a notes to this seminar, you get that full strategy. That is step number two. Now let's move it on to step number three. Step number three is you need to be reminding people who don't book in with you that you still exist. We are all super busy people and you can't take it personally if somebody calls up your cleaning business and then you don't hear from them again. But what you can't do is leave it there. People are so busy, we're human. I might call for, to get a cleaner and then, I don't know, the smoke alarm might go off or dinner might be ready or one of my children might be crying. I don't know what the case is, but people get busy and they forget that they got a cleaner, that they inquired about a cleaner. Or another thing that happens a lot of the time is people go and get a few different quotes from different cleaners and then don't take any action. So what you need to do is make sure you're reminding these people that inquired about your services that you still exist. And how do you do that? Well, two really simple ways. The first is retargeting ads or remarketing ads. These can be built on Facebook and on Google. On Facebook, you need to install something called a Facebook pixel on your website. And don't worry, I will give you another YouTube video that talks you through that step. And on Google, you need to create a retargeting um, tag that goes on your site. That might sound like mumbo jumbo, but stick with me for a second. So you put a little bit of a, a tag on your website, a little bit of code that sits there. What that then allows you to do is follow the people that have been on your website around the internet. It's pretty creepy, but this is amazing for your business. You will have seen retargeting ads before. Have you ever gone to look for a pair of shoes online? Thought, hmm, they seem quite nice, but I'm not gonna buy them now. X off the page. And then for weeks later, that same pair of shoes is following you all around the internet, yeah? That is a remarketing advert. And the cool thing is you can do it for your cleaning business. And the even cooler thing is it doesn't cost a lot of money at all. It costs us pennies every day to show people that have visited my family's carpet cleaning business online to show them an advert. 
and that advert looks really cool. I will pop it in here so that you can see it. Hi, Peter here at um, Smile Carpet Cleaning. Um, I understand that you've been onto our website. I hope that you made an inquiry. Thank you very much if you have. If you haven't, please give us a call on 0161 763 3133. We'll take care of your carpet and upholstery cleaning needs. And as I said, this particular advert doesn't cost at all a lot of money. It costs pennies every day and we get inquiries every day from it. And if any of you are spending any money on online marketing already, you will know that it can cost money and it can cost time and energy to get people on your website. If then that person calls you up and doesn't book in with you, wouldn't you just want to spend the extra few pennies to make sure that they get a reminder and give them that second chance to book in with you? Honestly, it works really well. Step number three is to remind people who didn't book in with you to book in with you. I've given you one option, retargeting. The other thing is the really, the other option is a really traditional, old fashioned way of just pick up the phone and contact the people that inquired with you and see whether they want to book in with you again. Now that might sound super simple, but in order to be able to contact them again, you need to make sure that every person that inquires into your business and says, hey, how much is it to clean my house or to clean my carpets or to clean my huge office building? Every person that inquires, you need to be finding a system to write down their contact details and to store them so that you can remind them if they don't book in with you, that you still exist and that they can still book in. Do you have something in place right now so that if somebody inquired, you store their details and you can remind them by phone, by email. If you don't, create something now, even if it's just a simple spreadsheet, even if it's just writing a note on your phone, but make sure you are recording anybody that comes in and inquires and then reminding them that they should be using you. So that is step number three. Now I'm going to move on to step number four, which is the simplest thing that you could start doing tomorrow. And if you're not doing it, you are leaving money on the table. Seriously. Step number four is to introduce a referral program into your cleaning business. I've seen cleaning business owners do this with amazing success. So a referral program is encouraging your current customers to recommend you to their friends, families, business partners, colleagues. And usually with a referral program, you want to put some kind of incentive in there. So you might contact all of your current customers and say, hey, if you refer me to a friend, I will give you and your friend that you recommended both, I'll give you both a Amazon gift card voucher or an incentive that I've seen works beautifully well before is if you recommend me to someone, I will give you and your friend, I will donate to a charity of both of your choices. This works really well because you're able to do good, you're able to give to charity, and people are more likely to recommend you because in the first instance, oh, if I recommend you, I get an Amazon voucher. Well, I don't want to seem greedy. Some people do think like that. I don't want to seem greedy, so I, you know, I don't want to recommend you in that way. The second option, Wait, if I recommend you, I get to donate to a charity that I believe in and, you know, everybody benefits, then yeah, of course I'm going to, I'm going to use that referral program. Um, so it's kind of a win, win, win. You win, the customer wins, the charity wins. It's a lovely way to do it. So create a referral program, create an incentive, whatever that might be, and tell all your existing customers about it. It is such a powerful way just think about if every single one of your customers today recommended you to one other person you would double your business you would double your business overnight if every single one that they recommended 
you then implemented the referral program and they recommended you, you've just tripled your business. And for what? Being able, the cost of an Amazon gift card voucher or donating to charity, that is an amazing return on investment. And if you do that charity option, it also is good karma. So that's a nice way to do that. The fifth and final step to winning more customers is another really easy one and one that you could go away right now and do. And that is contact all of your existing customers and see if they need more work done. What do I mean by that? So if you have a cleaning business where it isn't repeat work, so say you were going to clean someone's carpets or you do a one-off clean like a um like you go in and you do a after builders clean if you have a business that isn't a repeat business so they don't come to you every week then what you can offer is um you can call them and say hey um it was six weeks six months 12 months ago since we last cleaned I'm just giving you a courtesy reminder to see if there's anything else that we can clean for you or any other solutions. People find this a really helpful conversation. If you spin it, especially if we're just reminding you because we recommend that you get your carpets clean every 12 months, they'll think, oh, that was nice of you to offer. And nice of you to remind me that saved me a job. Yes, book me in or no, but call me back in six months time. So people actually see it as you're doing them a service and that's amazing. So that is if you have done a one-off clean for someone. But what if you clean for someone weekly, bi-weekly, monthly? So you do, you're a window cleaner or a maid service um, and you're always in somebody's home. What are you going to contact your existing customers and say? Well, you could tell them about the other services that you offer. Do they know all of the cleaning services that you offer? Um, you know, if you offer a maid service business, are you doing other things like oven cleaning? Um, if you're a window cleaner, are you offering other things like gutter cleaning, patio cleaning? Educate your customers. They want to know what other services you offer. They're already trusting you to come into their home. They don't want the hassle of finding another person to come and do another service. So if the same person that they can trust can also offer another cleaning service, they're going to be delighted. Um, my family's cleaning business is a carpet cleaning business. And we decided to get into premium floor cleaning as well. And on the week that we decided to offer premium floor cleaning, we contacted by email. So just email, we literally hit a send button and it blasted out to everyone. We contacted by email all of our existing customers, telling them about the new service that we offered. And within a week, we'd booked in 6,000 pounds worth of new work for floor cleaning. And we also booked in 2,000 pounds worth of carpet cleaning, so the service we already offered, because people saw our email and thought, oh yeah, I need to book in with smile carpet cleaning again so contact your existing customers but here's where it's really important is you want to make some sort of system so that you're contacting them on the regular you don't want to just contact them on the one-off make sure that you're doing that as a repeating task within your business so there are the five steps i'm going to run through them as a recap really quickly with them with you and see how you can implement them in your business so the first step was to be where your customers are. In order to do that, you need to know who your customers are and then choose the methods to get in front of them. So the three I mentioned was Google ads, Facebook ads, and leaflets and flyers. The second step is to collect online reviews. Getting glowing reviews about your business is so important. It convinces people to choose you over your competitors and it helps you gain visibility on search engines like Google, which is so powerful. Step three is to remind people to book in with you. So anybody that didn't book in with a clean with you, but they did inquire, you want to make sure you're, you're contacting them again to remind them that they can book in with you. 
and methods I recommended was retargeting ads, which you can do on Facebook and Google, and the old school way of picking up the phone or emailing them and saying, hey, do you still want us to clean your property? Then step number four was to introduce a referral program. You can go and do that tomorrow. So this referral program is gonna incentivize your current customers to recommend you to more and more people. And step number five is to contact your existing customers semi-regularly to see A, if they need to book in with you again, or B, do they know about all the services that you offer? Now, these steps are simple. I am not coming up with anything revolutionary. What I am asking you to do is just do them consistently in your business. Make sure that you're always asking for reviews, always asking for referrals. And if done consistently and well, you will get more customers. Your phone will ring more and you will see more stability and more security. You won't worry whether you're going to have more customers next week because you're doing all these little things that's going to drip new customers in from lots of different avenues. Now, I really appreciate you watching all the way to the end of this video. And as a thank you, for sticking around, I am going to give you a bonus. And this bonus is going to be the thing that changes your business. This bonus is to the people, so many of us do it, that watch this video and think, yeah, great points. And then they go and watch the latest Netflix series or they go back to invoicing within their cleaning business and they forget to implement them. This bonus is for you guys. This bonus is you can have a 20 minute, no, 30 minute, a 30 minute strategy call with me because I understand your business is different and how you're going to implement these steps is going to be different to the next person. So a 30 minute call where I'm going to go through these five steps and we're going to talk together about how you can implement them. If you watch this video, and this video is way over 30 minutes, if you watch it, you have just invested time in it. Make sure that that time's not wasted. Make sure that time is used to get inspired and then actually take action in your cleaning business. Because these steps are simple, but when implemented into your business are so, so powerful. So that's why I'm giving you this 30 minute strategy call. How do you book that in? Really, really simple. What I want you to do is go to godigital.com forward slash call and there you can choose a time and a date that works best for you and we're going to have a call just like this where I'm going to help you implement them steps and watch you grow an even more successful even more profitable business I really believe in you and if you're anything like my dad or the hundreds of cleaning businesses that I now work with I really want you to succeed because life is about way more than sitting behind a computer and organizing diaries and invoices and not being able to go on amazing holidays. Life is about having a fantastic business and also having quality time with your loved ones. And I want you to have that. So booking that strategy call, I would love to speak to you and let's see how we can grow your business. Thank you for watching to the end and I cannot wait to hear about your success stories. I'm cheering you on. Bye-bye.